struggling financially, their lives are in agonizing limbo. Justice, I need justice. I need justice, please. Yeah, that is my word. I need justice. Look at this killer. It's very hard. It's very sad. You don't know that. Her twins were just five years old when their father died. Now they are nine years old. And many here today are questioning whether the investigation would have been concluded more quickly if the victims had a different background. He said if this happened to uh, a British or um, um, a white person, this would have been sorted by now. The criminal investigation into Shredmat Limited is being carried out by the Health and Safety Executive. In a statement, it says it is because these lives matter that they are diligently progressing the thorough investigation they deserve. It adds that coronavirus has caused disruption and delays. Shredmat Limited says they acknowledge the distress of the victims' families and that compensation was being handled by its insurers. The families say today should have been about remembering and honouring the lives of Alamamo Jameh, Bangare de Kurai, Mohamedou Jagana, Usmane Diaby and Saibu Silla. But instead, it's a day of protest, so others don't forget how they died. Yasmin Bottlebuy, ITV News. A paramedic is still in hospital after she and a colleague were both stabbed during a call-out in Wolverhampton. Dina Evans and Michael Hipgrave were responding to a court property on Stevens Close yesterday. The 52-year-old man is in custody. Well, obviously, I think they're feeling quite shocked um, and quite traumatised by the incident that's occurred. And who wouldn't? Uh, we had over 700 um, uh, verbal assaults last year, but we had nearly 500 um, physical assaults on our staff. You can't have emergency service workers go out you know, to help people, then all of a sudden, you know, get stabbed. That, that, that can't be right. You know, in this day and age, that can't be right. And more must be done to ensure that, you know, people that do attack emergency service workers or any NHS workers, we need to be more vigilant and take stronger action to ensure that these people are taken to justice. Dozens of people gathered in a Warwickshire village today to protest against HS2. It was also a show of support for wildlife presenter and campaigner Chris Packham, who's challenging the project in the courts. Charlotte Cross reports. With songs and banners, people in this Warwickshire village gathered once again to protest the pending arrival of HS2 and all the work which will go along with it. HS2 will cut this community, which is part of Leamington Spa. There are 80,000 people here and they all walk through the open countryside here. Um, HS2 is a concrete electrified scar that will cut them off from their access to countryside. Groups including Stop HS2 and Extinction Rebellion took part in the demonstration in the village of Covington. In part, it was a show of support for a case going before the Court of Appeal tomorrow, brought by wildlife campaigner and TV presenter Chris Packham, opposing HS2. Many had also previously joined a protest campsite in Covington Woods, an ancient woodland affected by the project. They were evicted earlier this year, and the sound of diggers has continued throughout lockdown. Huge swathes of the countryside near Cubbington and off church are now fenced off like this. And you can see around me how many trees have already been felled. The ones that are still standing, I think you can see behind me, have orange markings of them, marking them out to go as well. And protesters say the loss of this kind of natural habitat simply isn't worth the cost. <laughs> they marched through the village and down to the gates of HS2 itself. The pandemic may not be over, but with work here continuing, they say time is of the essence. The people? people are aware, obviously, of the, the current situation. We're very mindful and respectful of that, but at the same time, we do need to, to make a stand today for this. Everybody that is here loves passionately the planet, trees, and, and essentially we need to put people and planet before profit. But as well as playing what it calls a pivotal role in the country's economic recovery, HS2 claims it is the best option for the environment, saying by providing a cleaner, greener way to travel, 
HS2 will help cut the number of cars and lorries on our roads, cut demand for domestic flights and help the countries fight against climate change. Tomorrow's court case will hear arguments refuting that. But for now, the work continues. Charlotte Cross, ITV News, Covington. International cricket returns tomorrow, albeit behind closed doors, as England take on the West Indies. And county cricket will return in August. One of those who's raring to go is a man who's now spent more than 20 years with his one and only county. Steve Clamp reports. Ian Bell back in training at Edgebaston. He's 38, but hungry for more cricket. Last week he signed another new contract.